Right, let's begin. <clears throat> From dastardly dog to perfect pooch. Or how you can enjoy stress-free walks with a dog that loves being with you, even when there are other dogs around. So first of all, thank you everyone for giving up your time and coming this evening and allowing me to share something with you. Uh, the format for this evening is going to be as follows. Uh, for the first 45-50 minutes, I'm going to be sharing with you uh, the most actionable thing that I think, that I know will help you get more control over your pet dogs. Yeah, this is the thing that completely changed uh, my relationship with my own dogs, and it's how we control 10 dogs a day on our adventures every single day. And it's how you guys can begin the process of stopping your dog running off to play with other dogs so that you can actually look forward to taking your dog for a walk. Okay, so that's going to be about 45, 50 minutes. And for the last 10 minutes, I'm going to be giving you a, an opportunity to build on what we covered so far in the webinar. Yeah, and so if I would, what I would ask is if you think that I've delivered on my promise of, of sharing something with you that you can put into action straight away, then, uh, then stick around for the last 10 minutes of the webinar because um, there's going to be a very special opportunity for those of you who want to build on what we've covered this evening and work, work further with me. All right, now we can't fix everything in an hour, but uh, in the time that we do have, I do want to bust a few myths about dogs and I want to make things nice and simple for you guys to understand. That's mainly because I like things to be nice and simple. <laughs> I'm a very simple man. I don't do complicated. Um, and dog training really doesn't need to be difficult. Um, I wouldn't say what we're going to cover tonight will be particularly easy, because if you want to get the best results in the quickest time, then it's, it's going to it is going to require you to change your routine and to put some effort into what, what I'm going to teach you tonight. Yeah, so, but none of it's difficult. None of it's difficult to understand. And it's going to be fun. Yeah, I like to have fun. My dogs like to have fun. We all learn better when we have fun, and that includes our dogs as well. So this way of training and interacting with your dog that I'm going to show you is is going to be more enjoyable for you. So, you so you know, you enjoy exercising and walking your dogs. And, uh, you know, we can't fix everything. I'm not going to say your dog is going to be better behaved from tomorrow morning, <laughs> but if you follow what I teach here consistently, then pretty quickly you can start moving towards having a more responsive dog that sees you as a fun person to be with. All right, some of the things, because I like to keep things nice and easy, some of the things I'm going to talk about are going to run a little bit contrary to what you might think about dog ownership but um, just trust me that this is what I do with my dogs this is what I've learned from some of the world's leading dog trainers and this is how I run my dog adventure and training business for the last four years too so who am I to be telling you all this let's have a little bit about me first <clears throat> well certainly the dog side of my life um, in 2011 I left a, a sales job I'd had for about 10 years because I wanted to start my own business and I loved dogs, and I, I knew I wanted to work outdoors. Um, so I, I naturally thought a dog walking business would be a good idea. Um, and I, so what I did was I started Pack Leader Dog Adventures. And Pack Leader Dog Adventures was a, a service where I was going to offer to dog owners who love their dogs, but because of work and other commitments, they, they couldn't give their dogs the exercise that their dogs need. And I wanted to give them the urban dogs more than just a walk around the block. Okay, so with some hard work, the business started to take off. But I, I quickly realized that after a couple of months that I didn't, just did not know enough about dogs. <laughs> um, it, was a, it was a real eye-opener for me. And it might be a similar situation to what you guys find yourself in with your own dog. Yeah, we all love our dogs dearly, but you know, it doesn't mean to say that we necessarily know anything about how to how to how to train them or how how we should behave with them. Yeah, they don't really come with a manual. And and my problem was that the dogs that I was exercising, they just weren't listening to me. Yeah, we would we would walk for five six miles, jog for five six miles, and then I I would let them off lead, and they would be playing and and they were mouthing and wrestling each other and having a great time. But I, and I was just a, a spectator to all this. And it was getting harder and harder for me to, to get these dogs back on lead and to get control of them. And I was getting really frustrated and I was a little bit worried about where it was going to all end up. So I took some advice from a friend of mine, Linda Ward, and she recommended some dog trainers. And so I, I began a, a doggy education, if you like, under world-renowned dog trainers, including John Rogerson, who was considered by many to be the, the forefather of modern dog training. Um, uh, Robert Elaine and 
uh, my good friend and mentor uh, David Davies, who some of you will know. And and from that moment on, as soon as I as soon as I, I this happened, everything changed in my business. Um, in and I started playing with the dogs and interacting with the dogs. And I started to become, become the thing that the, the dogs wanted to be with. They, they enjoyed being with me. They didn't want to play with each other anymore. And my business just took off from there. Um, since then, I've become a regular contributor to, to um, Pets, uh, Vets and Guests, David the Dogman Show on Radio Talk Europe. In 2012, uh, Pack Leader Dog Adventures was the first dog walking business in the UK to be recognized by Theo Bafetis as part of his Small Business Sunday competition. And uh, I won Entrepreneur of the Year in 2013. Uh, we've also, in the last two years, we've started to run um, dog training workshops and seminars for pet dog owners. We do, I do a lot of this stuff with David Davies as well. Um, and we're really trying to, trying to help pet dog owners to connect better with their dogs so they have a much better relationship with their dogs. Um, and a lot of you will have downloaded the ebook that, that went that went out the free ebook. Um, so this is my way of sort of trying to help more people and trying to get the word out there more that, you know, if you're having problems with your dog, if you're frustrated with your dog's behavior, you know, you can change it because I changed it and I changed, I managed to build a whole business around it. So, you know, that was that. And I walk many, many dogs every day. So you guys can do this with just one or two dogs. Um, so basically I took all the knowledge that I learned from all these amazing trainers and I changed it to suit my business and my training clients and now I've simplified it even further so that you guys can start having success too and so nothing I'm going to talk about tonight is, is theory based you know I'm not an academic sitting in a desk somewhere yeah, this is all this can all be applied practically by you and it's practiced daily by me and Alex on the adventures now I'm not saying that I'm the only dog trainer in the world I'm not saying I have all the answers I'm just here tonight to share my values with you guys and offer you the benefit of my experience so that you can start enjoying owning and exercising a dog exactly the way that I do now. So let's begin. From dastardly dog to perfect pooch. What is a perfect pooch? Well, there's definitely such thing as dastardly dogs because we see plenty of them everywhere and, and some of us own them. But is there any such thing as a perfect pooch? Um, now, I'm not talking about looks here. Yeah, well, I'm talking more about how I think a perfect pooch should act. Yeah, a perfect dog to you might be a different perfect dog to me. So forget the word perfect for now and let's just think great. Yeah, what does a great dog look like? What does a great dog do? And if you had to describe what you would want from a pet dog, from a great pet dog, what would it be? And that's where we're going to start now. So what should a great dog do? Now, um, most of us... Uh, it's highly likely when you're a dog owner that you, unless you're very lucky and you don't work, it's highly likely that you're going to have a job or other commitments. Um, so your dog is going to, you know, unless you're a, a shepherd, then you're unlikely to be able to take your dog with you or a dog walker like me. Um, but even Barry doesn't come out on, on all the adventures. Um, you're unlikely to take your dog with you all the time to work or to your other commitments. So you need, we need a dog that's going to be okay to be left alone at home. Yeah, that's, that's pretty standard. Um, you know, preferably to be left alone at home and be happy to be left alone at home, um, you know, without him sanding the doors with his teeth or removing the wallpaper from the walls with his claws while, he, while he's waiting for to come home. Um, the next one is easy to exercise, yeah? I like a dog that's easy to exercise. If you're able to exercise your dog fairly quickly and safely, then, then, it's, then it's much, much easier to fit your dog around your commitments. You know, your other commitments that you have in your life, like your kids and your job and, everything, and your hobbies and everything else that you want to do. Yeah, we all like to have, you know, days off and on a weekend, we can take the dog for a nice long walk to the beach. But in the main, we need a pet dog to be, to be fairly easy to exercise. And, you know, a lot of behavior problems are, are due to dogs not getting enough exercise. Uh, part of this is because, you know, a lot of people these days want to own a pedigree dog. You don't see so many mongrels around these days like we did 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. A lot of people want pedigree dogs, and these are often, you know, sporting or working breeds that have been bred to do a specific job, um, which require them to be super fit and be out all day. And so a traditional walk around the dock, walk around the block for a dog like that, um, you know, is going to be nothing more than a warm-up for something like a pointer or a cocker spaniel. 
yeah and, and and you not just those dogs either you can get energetic pugs and mastiffs you know i've met lots of energetic pugs and you can get lazy pointers too but regardless of the breed all breeds of dog wake up each day with a certain amount of exercise and a need to do stuff they like doing stuff and if you don't give them an outlet for that energy then it can build up and it can cause behavior problems yeah but in dogs basically dogs that get enough exercise they rest and they, they eat and they sleep better um so if they're easier to exercise and that's going to make our lives easier too <clears throat> and the final point i put up is is very important um you know unless you're a total hermit and you never go out and you're just staying all day with your dog or you have like a 10 acre field in your, as your back garden where you can exercise your dog then your dog is going to come into contact with other people and so you you need it to be fairly well behaved and safe to have around people and other animals and by 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 well behaved i just mean you know non-aggressive you know it doesn't have to be friendly doesn't want him to be running up and licking people all the time you know we just just fairly well behaved so that he's comfortable to be around people and then you can enjoy taking him out places to the park you know like i know what it's like when i'm we exercise dogs every day in the park and the beach and it's the public places and so you know i don't take an aggressive dog out on the walks with me but we do need the dogs to be well behaved and we need them to be to be doing what we want them to do otherwise we wouldn't be able to exercise them in these public places so that's what I think a, a, you know, a great dog should be like, the characteristics of a great dog. You might disagree, you might want to add a couple of things, but that's what I've narrowed it down to to make it nice and easy. Three, three simple things. So that's what a great dog should do for us. What about, what about a pet dog? Yeah, what does a pet dog need? Well, um, well, I, obviously, of having the dog adventure business, we have a lot of dogs staying here as well. You know, we've had dozens of dogs staying in my house over the last four or five years and so i have a pretty good idea of what what it takes to make a dog happy even when its owner isn't there yeah so so this is what i've narrowed it down to um the things that i think a pet dog needs and something to say before i go into the list is is that uh you know pet dogs by their very by their very existence they're a man-made thing really you know they're not like a wolf that lives in the wild or a bear or something like that yeah we've we've created pet dogs over many hundreds of years um so we so we need them to do certain things so the dogs need a safe place to live and rest yeah i i insist upon dogs uh coming to stay here for trial nights before they come to stay for the holidays and we take them for trial walks and getting to know you walks where we, where we're just basically getting to know the dog yeah and once the dog gets to know you and he knows that you're not a threat to him and that you know that he's going to go back home that you're going to provide a bed for him yeah they settle really really quickly um uh, a couple of meals a day hopefully we all feed our dogs at least one meal a day but maybe it's two um, most dogs that I've ever met enjoy eating I know I do too but the dogs enjoy eating not only their own food but anything else they can find or steal also and a pet dog needs exercise we've already touched upon this one um, not most dogs like playing they like running or swimming and depending on the breed they might like retrieving um, but you know dogs that, that are easier to wear out as we said before are, are going to be easier to live with um, but all, all dogs need exercise and the last thing is interaction um, dogs are quite unique in many respects is that they they thrive on uh, they thrive on human or they thrive on any kind of interaction really but they especially thrive on human interaction and um, you know we all get a dog to be to be our our man's best friend and 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 you you all know as dog owners the connection that you can have with your dogs and and a lot of problems that people are having with their dogs at the moment is because they've lost that connection you know or, or the dog maybe has that connection with something else uh that we don't want him to have it with so interaction is very very important and how the dogs get that interaction is very very important as well so where are we at um and so we know what a dog needs to be happy and uh as we've we've seen we know what a dog needs to be happy and we, we know what we want from a pet dog so why if we know that i've narrowed it down to its simplest things there but if we know that why do we have so many dastardly dogs yeah who you know chew up your house when you go to work or they repeatedly run away from you when you go to the park or they're lunging on the lead whenever they see another dog yeah why why, why is it so difficult well it's because of this 
this point that I'm going to say now, this is probably the most important slide. And it's a very important thing that you need to know about dogs. And once you get your head around it, and then you can use this information and you can make your dog much happier and you can make your life with your dog much easier as well. And it is, dogs are selfish. Right? Whether you like it or not, dogs are quite selfish creatures. Just like humans, I might add. Yeah, we're, we're no different at all. Yeah, we all like certain things. So we all like doing certain things at a certain time. And we'll betide anybody who gets in the way of our routine. Yeah, and do dogs are just like us. And by selfish, I don't mean that, you know, your dog wants to be top dog or leader of the pack or they want to dominate you and take over your house and make you live in the shed. No, by being selfish, all I mean is that dogs, you know, they enjoy, they like doing stuff that they enjoy doing. And they'll do those things that they enjoy as often as they can. Right, so that's that's it in a nutshell. Yeah, if you think about all of the things that your dog likes doing and ask yourself, does he try and do those things as often as he can? And the answer will probably be yes. Yeah, so just think about that. And once you get, like I say, once you get ahead around this, then it makes it much, much easier, as you'll find out further on in, in the webinar, about how you can use this information so that we can um, connect with our dogs and better control our dogs and enjoy our dogs a bit more. Because you don't need to be a, a dog trainer to have a well-behaved dog, all right? And you don't need to be a dog whisperer either. You don't need a degree in canine psychology. Yeah, you just need to remember that dogs can be quite selfish. They like doing certain things. All dogs are different. We've already said that dogs, they like interaction and most dogs are playful and they enjoy playing with a ball or another toy uh, and hopefully they enjoy playing with you. But the more you involve yourself with how your dog does the things that he likes doing, the more he'll want to be with you and the easier he's going to be to control. And not only that, but he won't need anybody else or any other dogs as well. So armed with that information, um, how can we... How can, we, how can we train our dog to, to be a better dog? Well, there are many ways we can do this. And as my good friend David Davies often says, there are as many ways to train a dog as there are people to think them up. Yeah, you could use a clicker or a whistle or treats or toys. But we're going to approach this from a, a slightly different angle. And so to make life as easy as we can for you guys, we are uh, we're going to tell you the easiest way to connect with bond and train your dog is to use something that he already likes okay so i want you to you'll you'll see in, in, in the next few slides exactly what i mean but if you have a good understanding and a good handle of what your dog is interested in then you're going to be much much more able to to influence him to control him to connect with him and to enjoy him so don't worry, I haven't, um, I haven't, I haven't accidentally put the television on. <laughs> this is for visual purposes only. So there's Friends. Yeah, we've all seen Friends. We're currently we watch rewatching all the reruns at the moment on Comedy Central because Toby, my youngest son, is is into them. But there's Friends. We all know Friends. And um, yeah, the Friends did everything together. They were always in the coffee shop together, or they were going to the to the Knicks game together, or, or or going to the movies together. Yeah, and some of them did other things together. Yeah, they get married to each other, several of them and stuff. Yeah, but they were all best friends. They all did everything together, right? So I'm just using this to set the scene for you right now. So let's take little Barry, who's asleep there at the moment. All right, now if Barry's fast asleep, and Barry is, is dreaming of the next day. He's dreaming of all the things that he's going to do the next day. And Barry likes treats. Yeah, we all know Barry likes treats. And he likes eating treats from Kongs as well. And Barry likes a ball. He loves playing with a ball. The bigger the ball, the better for Barry, definitely. And he also likes cuddles, too. Barry's he's quite an affectionate dog. He likes playing. He likes playing with big toys. He likes playing tuggy. Yeah, he, a lot with him being a mastiff. Yeah, he, he loves... Um, he loves playing tuggy games, and he also loves Yorkshire puddings. Yeah, um, so, so if you look at that list of things there all around Barry, all of those things that, that Barry loves, they are all things that I can, that I can use to influence Barry. Yeah, they are all things that I can pick up and take somewhere and, and use them to, to train, connect, and better control my dog. Now, 
let's imagine this was a different Barry. Yeah, this is Barry's. This is Barry's twin brother, Larry. Say, okay. So he's asleep, and he's dreaming of what he's going to be doing the next day. All of his favourite things, and his favourite things are chasing cats and squirrels. Yeah, barking at the postman, which the real Barry does do that as well. Um, chasing birds. Barry doesn't chase birds, but I know there's a lot of dogs who like chasing birds and things, and playing with other dogs. Yeah, Barry loves playing, or Larry loves playing with other dogs. He does it all the time, and he, he dreams about it on a night. And this is something that I'm going to be coming back to a couple of times in the webinar. And that's because if you think about all of the things in the last slide that I was able to you all of the things that Barry liked that I was able to use to influence him when I'm training him. Yeah, all the things on this particular slide, I'm, I have virtually no control over at all. Yeah, so... So if, if Barry isn't interested in playing with dogs, then it's not a problem. Yeah, I can still exercise him in the park, and I can, you know, I can, have, I can still enjoy a, a trip to the park and stuff. But if Barry loves playing with dogs, if Barry's, one of Barry's favorite things is playing with other dogs, then you know, taking my dog even just to the park is going to be a, a real hassle, isn't it? It's going to be, a, it's going to be, a, it's going to be stressful because Barry's going to be pulling me as soon as he sees another dog. Yeah, you haven't seen Barry when he knows there's, there's leftover Yorkshire puddings in that kitchen. He's hounding us every night, uh, every time we get up to, to go and do something to, to, until all them Yorkshire puddings are gone, yeah? Because that's his favourite thing. And if, if, if playing with other dogs was his favourite thing, then he's going to be exactly the same way with that. Yeah, so if your dog's constantly pulling on the lead to get to other dogs, or he's running, running away from you to get to other dogs, to play with other dogs, then that's because... He absolutely loves playing with other dogs. Sometime in his life, he's been allowed to play with other dogs. It might have been at a puppy party or something like that. But if that's the case, then that's the thing. And the reason why I'm focusing on this point so much is that this is the biggest pain that um, well, all of my training clients come to me with, my dog training colleagues across the country, they tell me that their clients come to them with the main problem is dog reactivity and dogs being too interested in other dogs. So what can we do about that? Well, um, so your, your your dog's going to be interested in something in his life. Yeah, it could be it could be playing with a ball. It could be chasing after rabbits. It could be barking at the postman. It could be playing with another dog. Yeah, your dog is going to love something in his life. It might as well be you. Wouldn't it be nice if it was you? Yeah, wouldn't it be nice if if, if playing with you was the most enjoyable thing that your dog enjoyed doing, yeah, then then trips to the park would be a pleasure, and 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 you could take him anywhere, and it wouldn't be a problem because he would want to be with you. So as another little example could be, if we think about Crufts, when Crufts is on the telly, I love watching Crufts, and we have all the dogs, we have all the beautiful different dogs, and there's the there's the service dogs who do their thing, and the agility dogs, and the, the but the best dogs that I, I like to watch on Crufts are the, you know, like the Friends for Life dogs. Yeah, because they, they have got the, that, that, that true connection with their owners, you know, and they're, often they're, they're just rescue dogs, or sometimes they've been specially trained to do medical jobs for their owners. But they're, they're, they're my favorite dogs because they're, you know, and so think about those dogs. If, they, if those dogs had been allowed to, to play with other dogs, you know, they, they they won't be friends for life, you know. They will be friends when there was some treats around, but then as soon as they went to the park, they would they wouldn't be friends at all. So your dog's gonna love something in his life. It might as well be you. But don't worry if you don't think that is you, because I have a secret weapon that is going to help you to to make that happen. So let's just quickly recap that. Um, I've got two columns here, yeah. So in column A, there's things that um, your dog loves doing or playing with these are things that people have told me about um, we had someone who had a pug who loved tangerines other one like brushes french bulldog like plastic bottles yeah sydney loves socks so these are all things in column a things that my dog loves hopefully you but these are all things in column a that that these are things that i can control really really easily yeah if my dog likes plastic bottles well i would rather he play with the ball but plastic ball is not a hassle i can still play with him with that i can still interact with him with that yeah the stuff in column b and you can probably add a lot more things onto that list excuse me the stuff in column b is things that you can't control yeah so if your dog wakes up on a morning and he's 
uh, you know, the, the main excitement that he's going to get in his life comes from something in column B, then your life's going to be much, much harder, isn't it, there than it is for the people in column A, all right? But all is not lost because if your dog is, is if your dog loves playing with other dogs, then he's already showing you that he is playful. You know, if he doesn't play with anything, then that's not a problem, is it? You haven't got a problem at all. But if he loves playing with other dogs, then he is playful, yeah? He just doesn't know how interesting you are yet. And so what you need to do is, I call this finding your dog's kryptonite, all right? We're looking for the thing or things that your dog loves playing with, and then we're going to control when your dog gets that thing, all right? I, I use kryptonite because it's like the thing that, you know, Superman they gave him his, his special powers, um... My friend Robert Elaine cleverly pointed out in an email to me that Superman actually got his powers from the sun and he was allergic to kryptonite and it would kill him. But I'm going to stick with kryptonite because I just like the word kryptonite. Yeah. So if you can find your dog's kryptonite and you can make your dog's kryptonite something that you that he loves, that you can control, then exercising and playing with your dog is going to be much, much, much easier. And I know that sounds very easy but the best solutions are always the simplest, all right? And you have to just trust me that this works because I've done this myself with my own dogs. It's how I turned around all the dogs that I, that I walk on my adventures every day. <clears throat> it's how we advise our training clients to keep control of their dogs. And it's how dozens of you guys who have emailed me and heard me mention Kryptonite in the ebook and the training emails have told me how you managed to gain control of your dog now. And yeah, now you're having fun on your walks. So you need to really, really think about it. Do like a little doggy audit after this webinar. Mentally walk a day in your dog's paws, or better still, watch him and take notice of all of the things that get him excited in the day. Make a note of them, yeah? It might not be what you think it is. It might not be what you want it to be, yeah? But you need to find out what it is. Um, so we've identified, let's say we've identified, you've done that and you've identified what your dog's kryptonite is. Um, so what do we do now? Well, once we have the kryptonite, there's two things that we're going to do. Yeah, so if it's a ball, then you only let your dog have that ball when you are playing with it with him. Yeah, when you are playing with it with him. All right, if your dog absolutely loves tennis balls, then you use tennis balls to, to play with him, to train him, to interact with him. Yeah, do not leave tennis balls lying around the floor in the house in this room, yeah, because that's going to make them less special. All right, and the same with everything with all the other kryptonite. Yeah, you, all of the kryptonite that you can control, yeah, you don't let your dog have that. Don't give him nothing, you know, give him something else, give him a Kong or something. Yeah, but keep the good stuff and use the good stuff. Yeah, because if we think back to what we said about our dogs being selfish, yeah, your dog's going to want that tennis ball. Yeah, so we can use his, his, his want and his desire for that thing that we have to, uh, to, to, to train him and, 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 and play with him and control him better on walks. And the second thing you need to do with the kryptonite is play with him. Play with him often, yeah, in the house, at the park, at the beach, anywhere and everywhere that you want to have good control of your dog, you should play or interact with him in some way. As John Rogerson, and I think David Davies says as well, you know, if you control the toy, control the game, control the dog. All right, now, and I'm, I'm saying toy there, but obviously I'm, I'm talking about kryptonite. This could be anything, remember, anything you can control. It can be food. Yeah? If your dog isn't particularly interested in toys or he isn't interested in anything that you can that, that you can physically play with him with, but he is interested in food, then you can use food. Yeah, I just, I just like it's nice to use a toy if you can because it's often easier to wear a dog out, to tire a dog out, and to play with a dog using a toy. Yeah, you just have to, it means he's not putting his teeth on you, he's just putting his teeth on the toy, and you can throw the toy, etc., etc. But there's lots of things you can do with food as well. Yeah, so you can, you can still use food for this. Um, so, what's next? How to play. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, how can I play with, you know, how can I, how can I take this thing that my dog's interested in, like a, like a plastic bottle, how can I make this more interesting than that dog's bum over there, yeah, well, you can, you can and you will, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how you can do that now, all right, so you, what you do is you, you con your dog, yeah, and you, you, you generally uh, be more dog, <laughs> uh, I want you to think about, you know, think about when a dog comes up to another dog in the park, and they do that little kind of, they just look at each other at first, don't they? And then they do that little kind of play skip thing and then another couple of skips and boom, boom, they're off together, yeah? And that was one dog saying to another dog, hey, you want to play? I want to play. 
yeah and if your dog likes playing with other dogs then he'll say yeah i want to play and he'll be off yeah if he likes playing with you he'll say no i'm sorry i'm playing with my owner it was much more interesting than you are all right but that first little that first little sort of skip thing that they do where they say hey you want to play yeah that's what i'm going to teach you guys how to do that now just takes a little bit of effort <clears throat> so you start at home yeah you start somewhere where there's low distractions like your sitting room or something like that or your kitchen or something like that it's no good like i said before it's no good going to the park and just expecting your dog if he's played with other dogs all the time or he's done stuff that you don't want him to do yeah it's no good just expecting him to automatically start start listening to you just because you've got your plastic bottle or your kryptonite or whatever it is in your hand <clears throat> yeah so we start at home and we build up like a pattern of behavior yeah, and we built we start building that pattern the blueprint for that pattern is built at home where there's low distractions and we can get a real good connection with our dog so the next thing you need to do when you play with your dog is you need to tease him a little yeah you need to make stupid noises get him really interested in the kryptonite <clears throat> this can be quite hard at first yeah you get on the floor with him play with him roll the toy around the floor yeah if you've got two toys that's even better two toys that are the same can be even better then if he gets one you can just tempt him with the other one all right whatever you do don't give him the toy all right think tease him a little yeah any ladies out there yeah we don't want to be giving the store away on the first date here we want to be just playing with the dog and tease him a little bit show him it oh look what i've got what's this what i've got here yeah we're looking for we're looking for some kind of reaction for your dog every dog's going to be different levels but we're basically looking for some kind of reaction from your dog that you wouldn't normally have got <clears throat> so um if you if you normally throw your your toy for your dog yeah and he goes and gets it for you well this time make him do something else before you throw it make him you know wait until he sits or wait until he goes down or wait until he gives you eye contact and then do it yeah if your dog normally doesn't play at all with you then you know just your dog coming towards you is going to be a a good thing to reward him for yeah so or if he looks at you if he gives you some eye contact you could reward him then um but you you need to figure out where to get him interested this is another reason why you need to start at home as well all right because what i basically want you to do is yeah i want you to play like you did when you were five years old right which was a long time ago i know that we can't remember but you play like you have no inhibitions yeah just be stupid do whatever it takes just to get that dog interested in you yeah? if your dog is playful with other dogs he will play with you you just need to convince him that you are a playful playful dude and it, it can be hard yeah like um what have i said here uh so yeah when you like when you're five years old so you know that thing i was thinking about this earlier on when i was writing the presentation and i remember toby when he was little he was sort of pretending to be spider-man he used to love spider-man and he he did this thing we've got a video of it somewhere and he was pretending he was acting out the whole scene from spider-man when he got his powers and he was looking at his hands and, and the hairs going out of his hands and then he would pretend to climb up the wall and me and beth were sitting watching him and we were laughing our heads off but we, obviously we didn't want to let him know that we'd seen him do it you know because we didn't want to break that spell and you know he, he was like in the moment and he was so enjoying himself and that's what I want you guys to get into the habit of doing now <clears throat> all right so you might have forgotten how to play and be silly but just start in the sitting room or start in your kitchen yeah and don't be afraid to mess up yeah you can be and you are really interesting to your dog he just doesn't know it yet all right it's like it's like going to the gym and using a muscle that you haven't used for a while it's quite hard at first it feels a bit awkward and you know and you might want to quit yeah but once you get past the awkward stage things get a little bit easier and then pretty soon you start lifting heavier weights and feeling fitter and all the awesome feelings that come that come with doing that so then that's what it's going to be like with your dog too all right i've got there's one caveat to this and that is if your dog is in any way possessive very possessive or can be in any way aggressive over a toy or food or anything like that that you're going to be using then i would probably seek the advice of a behaviorist yeah and do this kind of training with them in person all right always put your own safety first so there's a little story that I can tell you guys that uh, will give you a, a good example of, of, of <clears throat> the power of what, what happens when you can find your dog's kryptonite. And this is a story of the magic feather. This happened a couple of years ago. We were out up at Hetton Lions, which is a country park near where we, where we exercise the dogs. It was two years ago. It was a really hot, hot summer. We were doing lots of swimming with the dogs because it was so nice. I was getting in the water with them as well. And the one day we were at Hetton Lions and there had been a... A swan had been massacred basically the, the previous night um, and you can see little Stewie there sort of tentatively 
um, checking out the water. Stewie's not a really very big swimmer. He's one of our regular adventure pugs. Um, but Stewie was mega obsessed with these feathers behind. You know, he was mega obsessed with the the big scene of the crime, and he he kept going over to the feathers all the time. And it was starting to do me head in. You know, I was Stewie, Stewie, come on, come on, leave it, leave it, because I don't want to meet in bits of dead bird and stuff. Obviously, no matter how much he might want to do it. But um, and so. And so I was, I was pulling them away and keep taking them away and putting them on lead and taking them away. And he kept going back to the feathers all the time. And then what happened was the, the, the penny just kind of dropped with me, you know. And, and I remembered what Dave Davies always said to me, which was, you know, you need to use in dog training, you can just use whatever the dog's interested in at that time. So the penny dropped and I, I went and I found the biggest swan feather that I could find, a clean one, obviously, from the, from the massacre. And... I used it, uh, I, I showed it to Stewie and I teased him a little bit in the way that I've just been describing to you guys now. And I teased him and I teased him and, I, and he eventually started following me and he took a few steps into the water. And then eventually he, Stewie just started free swimming towards me in the water just to get the feather. Yeah, and, and, then, he, and then he free swam a little bit home after that. Yeah, so that, that's a story of the magic feather and that's just me using something, you know, as bizarre as a feather. You know, your dog might be into feathers, you know, and, and the thing is, you won't have to use a feather forever. <laughs> um, you know, I'm not saying you have to take a bunch of feathers to the park with you every day. All you're doing at the moment is you're, you're teaching your dog using the thing that he's interested in that you're a fun person to be with. Yeah. Um, the kryptonite itself is just a tool that we use. Yeah. So we can teach him that, that we're a fun person. Eventually, it won't matter what the toy is. Yeah, you'll be able to play with your dog with anything, but for now, let's just use something that he's interested in because that's the easiest thing to do. Yeah, and that's why sort of Sydney now, Sydney Macaque Spaniel, he'll play with me with anything. You know, he'll retrieve a poo bag that I throw in the air because he just loves playing with me. An empty poo bag, I should say, an empty one. Anyway, <clears throat> so let's run through that one more time. This is very important. I'm going to run through the, 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 the play checklist for you now. And I can send you guys any other, any other slides if you like after this. Somebody can remind me on. So we need to find our dog's kryptonite. Okay, hopefully it's going to be something that you can control easily like we discussed. All right, if, if you think your dog doesn't like you, you're wrong. Okay, if, if he plays with other dogs and you know he's playful, we just need to teach them that you are a fun person to be with. Okay, so find something that your dog likes and then use it. And food is a perfectly acceptable thing to use. Okay, but experiment with the different things that you see your dog getting interested in during the day. Safe things, obviously. Find your dog's kryptonite. Keep it special. Keep it safe. Yeah. If you act, if you hide the kryptonite, and when you're playing with your dog, you act as if that kryptonite is special, then your dog will think it is special too. Yeah. And the example that I'm going to give you here is, if you think about puppies, when you get a puppy and he and, and the puppy has all the lovely toys that you've gone to pets at home and bought, or hopefully the Pat Leader Dog Adventure Store, you've bought them and you've you've got them lying all over the floor, and and your puppies. Just ignoring them, yeah, but he, and, he, and he picks up a slipper or he picks up one of your shoes and he runs across the room and, 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 then, and then we chase him and then, and then the puppy gets a reaction and then it's become a game from him straight away. Yeah? And, and so the puppies learn straight away that if he takes the shoe, someone will play with him. Yeah, and dogs learn very quickly too. So, so we made the shoe special. Yeah, the dog didn't think the shoe was special. He just picked it up. All right, so we can reverse that psychology if you like. And we can make things that the dog finds interesting even more special by playing with them ourselves. Yeah, dogs want what other people, what what, what other dogs have, or what, or what people have. Yeah, so just by carrying the kryptonite around and keeping it special and not leaving it lie around the floor so your dog can get used to it, that's going to help you massively. Play with your dog, little and often. Yeah, show him it a little bit, tease him a little bit, make on how wonderful it is. Oh, isn't this a wonderful toy? Look what I've got. Yeah, and then let him have a little taste of it, little play with it, yeah, and then play with him and, and then leave him wanting more. You want to start somewhere easy, yeah, start in your sitting room or your kitchen or somewhere like that where there's low distractions, and then you can build on that from there, yeah. So once you've locked down the sitting room, once you've got your dog playing nicely with you in the sitting room, then move into the kitchen, then move into the garden, and then, you know, move into a quiet area of the park where you can keep your dog on lead and you can play with him there and get him interested in you there, yeah? In each of these places, you're teaching your dog you are the most interesting thing to play with in that park or in that sitting room or in that garden, 
yeah you won't be you highly unlikely to be able to go from playing with your dog in the sitting room for a couple of days to taking him to the park and expecting him not to run off and play with another dog now we need to build up to that and enjoy it this is fun yeah playing with your dog is fun all right i'm I'm, I'm going to be very honest with you now when you know and there's times in the past when I've, I've, I've had dogs in the past and I've, I've found them so frustrating and I've, you feel like you're telling them off all the time you know stop pulling on the lead stop pulling or come back come back stop running away yeah once you once you turn this around and you, and you find something that your dog likes and you use it to play with them yeah being with your dog becomes a like, really really enjoyable experience so please please enjoy this and don't be afraid to screw up all right this is very very important as well this might take a bit of time for some of you it might take a couple of days some of you might happen straight away some of you might take a little, a little bit longer than that might take a week or more of just gradually playing little and often with your dog all the time but don't be disheartened yeah if your dog just looks at you for the first time as if say yeah you know i'm not interested you know you know just try again try again in an hour try again that night or try again the next day yeah don't be frightened you, you, you can't mess this up okay the only thing you're going to do by doing this is to teach your dog that you're an interesting person so 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 do so do this right so so p playing with your dog and getting that that first connection that you have with him right is 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 like the foundation stone of everything that i teach yeah and, and, and that's everything that i that i teach in the dastardly dog transformation program right so if you do nothing else but start playing with your dog as regularly as you have as I've described to you this evening, yeah, and you begin to build a relationship with him, you'll find your whole life with your dog becomes much more enjoyable. Your dog's going to respond to you better. You'll become a better owner who understands what his dog likes, and then eventually you'll have more control on walks because you'll have, you know, you'll have the invisible leash, yeah, which is where your dog comes back to you because you, not because you're shouting at him, because he wants to come back to you. So that's the starting point for you. And, and finding something your dog loves and starting to play with him is the first step but there's much more you can do if you want to quickly move towards the goal of having a really great dog so to make it super easy for you I've, I've, I've put together a, a program which has taken basically all of my learnings and experiences from the last four years five years and and I've put them into a program that I know pet dog owners will enjoy and they'll find really transformational with, the, with their dog's behavior and that's the dastardly dog transformation program all right now this isn't a typical dog training program it doesn't start like you do with a lot of books where you saw dog sit and the dog just sits yeah obviously we i'm going to cover how to do sits and stays and spins and all that kind of thing yeah but i'm after something much more than that i'm looking for you know how would you like to be a better owner yeah how would you like to have a dog who wants to be with you wherever you go yeah, and, and all this, on all, all the other things will achieve, and, and much, much more than that. Yeah, it's called transformation for a reason because it's. it's I believe this program is totally going to transform the way you, you you interact with your dog. So, what is the Dastardly Dog Transformation Program? Well, as you can see by from the infographic here, I've split it up into into four sections, and I will give you a brief overview now of each one, and you can see where where playing with your dog. Which, like I said to you before, is, is the is the foundation stone of of everything that that I like to to do when I'm when I'm training someone how to have a better relationship with their dog, playing with their dog and connecting with their dog is is the start of all of that. And you'll see how that this runs through the whole of the the, the transformation program here. And this is the formula. So we've got activity. Yeah. So in the in the program, I gave you a full step by step process for how you can pro provide all of the mental and physical stimulation your dog needs. All right, there's lots of ways you can wear a dog out, and I'm, I'll, I will show you how to do all that. Yeah, this is all the games that we play with the dogs every day, all the training techniques that I use with mine and my clients' dogs on a daily basis. And like I said before, the biggest pain that people come to me with is that their dogs are too interested in other dogs, they're too reactive, and they're spoiling the walks. You know, they can't enjoy walks anymore. Um, well, by you providing all of your dog's mental and physical stimulation, he won't need any other dogs. Yeah, he'll want to be with you wherever you go. So I'll give you all of that in the program. We cover how to take, how to go through this process step by step. Take it from your sitting room to your kitchen to your garden, and where we can keep control of the dog and and provide all that mental and physical stimulation that the dog needs. And next, number two is bond. Right, having a 
having a great bond with your dog is uh, it's just it's absolutely magic yeah and I know because I I feel like I have good bond with my dog a great bond with my dog and the dogs that we exercise every day but I haven't always had that yeah so I've seen both sides of it as well and and you know we, we all got a dog to to be our our best friend you know to give us a reason to enjoy more exercise and trips to the park you know as well as cuddles on the sofa um but for a lot of dog owners you know that relationship at the moment is it's very much a one-way street yeah where where you provide all of the food the cuddles and the home comforts but then as soon as your dog's out the house he becomes like you know he's never heard you before he doesn't re he doesn't recall to his name he doesn't react to his name even he forgets everything that you've done for him and he just heads off to have fun with his mates and you know what you know it's just up to you whether you can get him back on the lead or not yeah no i don't know about you but if if i if i treat my wife like that then she wouldn't be my wife very long yeah so we shouldn't be we shouldn't be treating our dogs like that either you know we want to we want to be we we want to make this into a two-way process yeah and there can be yeah we can we can build a, a fantastic bond with our dog um, using the process that we've started tonight, which is playing with your dog. So I'll show you how to, you can have the best relationship with your dog using all of the resources that you already have available to you. Um, number three is control. Having great control of your dog is going to allow you to give him much more freedom. Yeah, I know that sounds strange, but it, it really is true. The more control you have over your dog, the more freedom you can give him. And more off-leash time shared with you and makes them easier to wear out. It's more fun, as I've described. You know, I've been there myself where I am feel I'm constantly shouting for my dog. And, 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 you know, this having more control over your dog and making trips to the park more enjoyable is something that, that, I'll be, that, that we'll be able to give you with this, yeah? And we'll do that not by shouting at the dog or jerking him on the leash, yeah? But we do that by motivating the dog to want to spend time with us. And that's quite a nice thought, isn't it? Next one is diet. Yeah, this is an area that most dog owners vastly underuse, I think, when it comes to how they can influence, train, and, and connect with their dog. Okay, for most dogs, food is their most precious resource. Um, and there's many, many ways we can use your dog's daily allowance of food and treats to make living with your dog much easier for you and lots more enjoyable for your dog. All right, that goes from keeping them entertained when you have to go out yeah to, to train them to do whatever you want them to do yeah and I'm not talking about you know obviously we will cover lots of more advanced things within the program but I'm at, at the start we're going to be um, showing you how to use activity bond control and diet just to help you have a great dog that's a pleasure to take anywhere and a pleasure to live with too so that that is the dastardly dog transformation program yeah it's my complete blueprint for having a great pet dog that loves being with you he doesn't run off in the park or chew your house up you know he's generally a joy to live with now if your dog doesn't find you very interesting at the moment don't worry yeah we can start changing that straight away and by following this this system you will have a dog that would, would rather be with you yeah if you don't if you don't have a clue how to get your dog interested in playing with you then I'm going to walk you through the exact steps that we've already covered tonight but in much greater detail and with demonstration videos too so that you too can can start that connection off and start and start having a great relationship um, so let's have a little look at the program I'm one slide behind that should go on for the last one yeah so so it's a complete fun dog training program for pet dog owners so you can learn how to control and have fun with the dog in the park even if you've never done any dog training before yeah this is we're gonna so you've never done any dog training before and you uh, you don't have a close close to start training your dog well I'm going to show you based on what I've already shown you this evening building on that so what do you get with the dastardly dog transformation program you get seven one-hour live training webinars yeah these are going to be delivered on a Thursday evening same as this one and they're going to last one hour each and there'll be Q&A's as well at the end of these webinars you get an additional three hours of how-to videos too yeah this is never before seen videos that I've put together um, there's a couple of special extras going to be coming too but this is three hours this is going to supplement the stuff that we're going to cover in the webinars um, where where I, I will demonstrate to you or for you I should say exactly how you can do 
all the things that I need you to do in the program, yeah, the things that are going to help you have a better connection with your dog. Um, you get immediate access to a brand new 40 minute dog training video. This is live now. This is seven days to a better dog, um, which gives you the 20 hints and tips that I use, my best 20 hints and tips that I use every single day um, to control all the dogs that we do on, when we take them out and exercise them in public places. Um, there's dastardly dog training program notes as well to assist you. Um, you get access to me through my private, through a, a new private Facebook group. Um, there's not really any other way you're going to be able to get access to me at the moment with this because we're going to be busy building the program. And you get lifetime access to the Dastardly Dog Training Program too. Yeah, so all the webinar, the webinars are going to be live, but then they get uploaded to the membership site, and then you guys can watch them as many times as you like and ask as many questions as you like too through the Facebook group. So the total value of the program. Um, it's 10 hours altogether of video and webinar training plus the additional Facebook group stuff and 10 hours of access to myself for dog training would cost in excess of £497. Now the Dastardly Dog tra tra Transformation Programme will be available to purchase for £297 but until Sunday the 18th of October 12 p.m. you will be able to get full lifetime access to the program for a one-off investment of just £97. So I've got a 10-day exclusive offer for you and it starts tonight at the end of this webinar and that is my complete blueprint to having a great dog that loves being with you. 10 hours of jargon-free, easy to implement, fun dog training. Yeah, this is all fun, all the time. I want, want you guys to be able to have fun with your dogs. Further support and guidance for you through my private Facebook group. Yeah, we, I get lots of people emailing me back for the emails, but from now on, this, you know, access to me is, is going to be through the private Facebook group. Uh, full lifetime access to the Dastardly Dog Transformation Program for only £97. Yeah, and on the 18th of October, 12 p.m., the price will revert to £297. All right, so it's like a £200 saving that you're going to get uh, for purchasing the Dastardly Dog Transformation Program now. And you can do that by going to mydastardlydog.com and clicking on the product tab. And oh yeah, sorry, I've got a I've got a bonus offer as well actually for this evening. This is just for this evening. For everyone who signs up for the Dastardly Dog Transformation Program before 9 p.m. this evening, so we've got what just over an hour, um, you guys will receive a Dastardly Dog Transformation Kit free as well. Now the kit is something that I've had on sale. Um, successfully um, through the store um, for people who been buying the e uh, uh, have downloaded the ebook. Then they, some, a lot of people have uh, bought the Dastardly Dog Transformation Kit. Yeah, this has a retail value of over 20 quid, and this gives you all the tools you need um, to help you get started in the program straight away. All right, like uh, you get a two meter long lead, uh, some nice tasty training treats that you can use to get your dog interested in you. Um, there's a Kong and some toys to play with as well. Yeah, So that's over 20 quid for that, but I'm going to do that free. I'll post that tomorrow to anybody who purchases the, the, the Dastardly Dog Transformation Program. That's before 9 p.m. this evening, and that's at 97 pounds. On the 18th of October, 12 p.m., the price is going to revert to 297 pounds. And if you want to buy the product now, um, you can click on the product tab at mydastardlydog.com. So there it is, peeps. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the webinar, and I hope you got some really useful information out of it that you feel like you can put into action straight away. So if you'd like to build on what we what we talked about, about playing with your dog, yeah, you don't want your dog to run away from you at the park anymore or pull you on the lead or chew up the house, then you can visit mydastardlydog.com, click on the product tab where you can purchase and get full lifetime access uh, to the Dastardly Dog Transformation Program for just 97 quid and save 200 pounds on the regular investment. All right, and you, you also get immediate access to uh, to seven days to a better dog too. Yeah, and that's got all the dog training tips that you'll be able to put into practice straight away to help you start connecting better and having more control and more fun with your pet dog. So that's uh, that's the end of the webinar. Thank you very much for watching. Um, we'll do a, a short Q&A now, and 